everyone. Thanks for joining us today for a new Facebook Live series where we're discussing mental health and counseling frequently asked questions. And today in honor of November being National Adoption Month, we're talking all about Pathways Post-Adoption Support Services. And we're here with Liz Petroviak. She's one of our supervising therapists who specializes in young children and their families, and especially those who live in adoptive and kinship homes. So Liz, to start us off, can you just tell us what is post-adoption support? Sure. Um, so post-adoption support at Pathway um, includes respite services. Um, so that means, you know, if you uh, have adopted a child and need a weekend, you know, break, um, everybody needs a break once in a while. Um, so you just call our main office number um, and get that information and see how we can help you with that. Um, we also have um, mentoring services which um, your child is paired with a direct care mentor um, and takes them out once a week, depending on the child's needs. Um, for a couple hours, they may um, be outside. Um, you know, they may go somewhere, obviously, um, with COVID precautions um, and restrictions as well. Um, and all of our staff are wearing masks in those um, instances, of course. Um, and then we also have um, support services, um, I mean, support groups, um, which we'll talk about a little later on um, the exact um, times and, and um, specific um, populations um, or groups that we'll be working with um, for those groups. Um, and we also have um, family empowerment services. Um, family empowerment is um, when your child is involved in counseling at Pathway. You, you and your spouse um, or you, you individually um, will meet with our post-adoption services worker um, who will teach skills and you know, help you better manage your child's behavior um, depending on your need. Yes, and as we at Pathway know, adoptive families certainly face different challenges than many other families do. Can you touch on that a little bit more? Sure. Um, so a lot of times um, our adopted families come in with um, behaviors such as um, lying, stealing. Um, they report a lot of manipulation, um, difficulty with transitions. And again, this isn't all adopted families, um, you know, and it, of course, depends on um, the child, the age um, and the severity um, that they eventually seek services. Um, so a lot of our children are struggling to build trust with their adopted family. Um, and the family empowerment piece that I briefly mentioned before um, is something to help build trust. So the parents help connecting with the child even when they are trying to correct their behavior. Um, and I can go into more detail if needed about that um, if you have questions. Um, so yeah, just a lot of um, really challenging behaviors and not not every um, agency is specializing in that. Um, and we find that we have some really great tools for these families who have that specific need. Yes, yes. And just to touch on that, Pathway is one of the few agencies who does offer post-adoption support services where our therapists and our case managers are specifically trained to work with adoptive and kinship families. Um, just knowing their unique needs and um, the different challenges that these families face. And Liz, can you, can you also talk about who do we offer these services to? Sure. Um, we you know, start at the earliest age of four or five, um, depending on their, um, you know, developmental um, age as well and their milestones they have met. And um, we go all the way up until um, adulthood and we also support the parents um, or the grandparents, you know, or the aunts and uncles who are working with these um, kids. Um, so it's all ages really. Yes. And does it matter if they are adopted through Pathway or another agency? Nope, we will see anybody and any place you've adopted through. Yes. So what, can you go into more detail about what counseling might look like for an adopted child? Sure. 
Um, so we uh, have an initial assessment. Um, so whether you are wanting um, mental health, um, individual therapy or case management services, um, there still needs to be an initial assessment. Um, so this is something that the parents are for sure involved in, um, gathering as much information as possible, um, medical history, um, you know, mental health history, and sometimes, you know, Ad an adopted child has a lot of holes, you know, in that, in knowing their birth parents' mental health and everything. So we just try and gather as much information as possible. Um, and depending on the child's age, um, therapy would be with the child. Um, and sometimes kids are wanting their parents there the entire time. And we just, we work with what your need is at that time. Um, so the first month or so is a lot about just building trust, building a rapport with the client and the family, um, just so they feel comfortable sharing their feelings. And, you know, cause a lot of times, um, you know, these kids have very conflicting feelings about adopted family and their birth family. So they may not feel comfortable sharing that with their um, adopted family. So we try and create a safe place where they can do that. Um, and a lot of times, um, kids come in with their adoption book that they received when they got adopted. Um, so we help them kind of um, expand on that if they can. And um, we use a lot of um, TBRI, which is um, trust-based relational interventions, um, which is an evidence-based model that helps, helps parents um, connect with their child before correcting. And it's also a way for kids to feel, you know, that they have a voice and, you know, they have the right to choose between, you know, spaghetti or pizza, you know, something kind of simple like that. Uh, so the TBRI is not only used in um, counseling and individual case management, it's also used in family empowerment. Um, so that is, you, when you come into our offices, you hear a lot about TBRI and you hear the language and everything like that. Um, but I don't have to get into that right now. Um, and all of our clinicians as well are um, trauma informed. Um, so we use a lot of um, interventions that help understand their trauma and how that has impacted their behavior. Um, and that's really the basis of what we try and educate our parents on and their families about how your child, you see this part of your child as this negative behavior, but we try and help them understand that is their trauma and they're trying to tell us something. For sure. And so just to reiterate, the goal of counseling for an adopted child and their family is just to build that trust and build that connection. Okay. And so our last question for today, uh, before we wrap things up, is just can you tell us a little bit about the support groups we are currently offering or do have specifically for adoptive families? Yes. Okay. So um, right now we have um, four different support groups, I believe. Um, there is an online support group that is happening through Zoom um, with Adopted and Kinship Mothers Group. Um, it's Wednesdays from 11 to 12 p.m. Um, and you just call our main office to register. Um, and I don't know, Liz, if you're going to put that number up or should I, I could say it now. Um, sure, it, go ahead. It's 330-493-0083 to register for all these groups. Um, and then we have an online kinship connection group, which is the fourth Wednesday of the month from 11 to noon as well, and that's via Zoom. And when you register, um, the facilitator will send you the Zoom invitation. And then currently, um, or over the last three months, we've had an in-person group, um, and that is on the Adoption and Kinship Mothers Breakfast group, which is on Saturday, um, and it's the second Saturday of each month. Um, and that's 9.30 to 12, and um, please, keep yourself, keep an eye out on the website as um, coming into the next month. We have not yet scheduled the December um, meeting, but 
with all the increase in um, cases, we will monitor that as needed for the in-person group. Um, and then there's a Holmes County, um, if that is your area, Adoption and Kinship Moms group as well. That's the third Thursday of the month from 9.30 to 11.30. Um, and again, that is um, at, it, this one is at Grace Church. I'm sorry, the other one was at Dressler, our main office in Canton, Ohio. Um, so again, these may change um, just with the um, increase in COVID cases. So um, at, the, at this time though, the Zoom meetings are occurring. And like Liz said, just keep an eye out on our website. We'll keep things updated, but these are just great groups to connect with people who are in the same situations that you are and their families have had successes and challenges just like you, where sometimes you might feel as an adopted family that, um, wow, this is hard. I don't know what to do. Um, we're in this, we're in the trenches, but other people are experiencing the same things. And each of these groups are facilitated by trained pathway staff. And they also use TBRI skills and resources in these groups as well. Right. And they're just a great time of connection and to build other relationships with people who know exactly what you're going through. So, Liz, do you have anything else to add today about our post-adoption support services? No, um, I, I am actually from the Brook Park office. Um, so we are all always um, seeking new people to come and we are here to help um, for all these issues and all these challenges that you're facing. All right, well, thank you everyone for joining and we'll see you next month. Thank you.